Hi everybody, my name is Natalie Pernalis. I am with Pernalis Studio for Music and Performing Arts. I've had quite a few teachers message me or call me or text me, <laughs> ask me how to kind of maneuver on this virtual world that we are all communicating with right now. And so after sort of much discussion, I decided I would create a little tutorial for you y'all because um, especially if you're not sort of used of working on social media and um, in, in sort of the digital world, it's, it's, it's kind of of scary sometimes. Uh, I've been playing around with online lessons for a few years. I've had students who, you know, who've, you know, moved to other countries or, you know, their friends lived nearby and studied, studied with me and they wanted to take a voice lesson or what have you, or they were traveling and they didn't want to give up their voice lessons. So I've been doing it for quite a few years now. Um, and so I, I feel quite uh, confident in my teaching on social, on, on, on online streaming. Um, it's definitely does never will replace one on one and I don't think it should. Um, but in a pinch and in our current sort of climate, there's nothing much we can do. So I think it's important for us to continue lessons. I know some teachers were mentioning to me that they might just stop. But our students need to be consistent as possible. They may not have school for the rest of the year. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, more than ever, our students need us to provide stability for them. And the world needs music. Let's be plain and simple. So if you also are a performer, I really encourage you to be performing um, online streaming concerts as much as possible and just bringing hope into people's lives. <sighs> I think that's our job as musicians and um, artists and educators. So um, just a couple um, sort of helpful tips that have helped me. Um, so first of all, you want to encourage your students to make sure that they have a high speed Internet. Um, I've taught a few students where they've had not the best Internet and it's nothing worse than glitching and slowing down and all that. So you want to make sure that they have a good um, tablet or computer. Cell phones will work. I've used cell phones over the years. I actually find I use my own cell phone mostly um, just because it just seems to be um, easier. I've tried, like I said, different services. I've used Skype. I've used Facebook Live. I've used... Um, <sighs> Um, FaceTime on, on iPhones. Um, I find the easiest across all platforms is Zoom. It's a free service. You can pay for it. You don't have to. There's more options if you do pay for it. And I've noticed they've actually um, decreased some of their um, services. But one-to-one -one is still free. So that's currently what my studio is using. Um, I really advise the students to have uh, music to either use a music stand for positioning um, and repositioning. Sometimes you'll have to move it in the lesson or if they can, um, you know, purchase, uh, you know, tripod on Amazon. Um, now, mind you, there might be canceling non-essentials on Amazon, but if you can do it in the next little bit, that would be great. Um, for piano, really make sure that the camera is set on the side of the piano so you can see your student's hands and make sure yours as well so they can see your hands and your upper body. It's very important, important. For voice, make sure that you can see their full body. A lot of students will end up trying to sit on the couch. No, this is a lesson. It needs to be done properly, so make sure it's full body. Um, if they don't have any access of, you know, putting their tablet or phone or whatever they're using to stream, have a parent or a sibling hold the phone. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is if you are playing the piano or playing your instrument, doesn't really matter, or singing, the other person, if they try to speak or sing, you won't be able to hear them and vice versa. So I use a lot of body language. So if I want a student to stop, I'll, you know, I'll put my hand up and say, you know, like this, they know to stop. If they're doing a really good job while they're playing, I'll do a lot of things like this. You can kind of create your own sort of um, body language. I use a lot of body language naturally when I speak. So I find I'm doing even more when I I'm doing online lessons. Make sure that if they're a younger child, make sure that there is a parent or an older sibling, someone who can supervise. Um, make sure that lighting, uh, make sure the room is well lit. I've had sometimes students, you know, try to do it in a sort of semi-dark room and then you can't see hands, you know, and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> little siblings and pets like to come visit. 
it's okay at the beginning of the lesson or at the end. You know, they always want to show you their dog if they're younger students. Um, but make sure that the parents understand ahead of time um, that that cannot happen. I actually have um, a template that I send out to my online students. If you want a copy, I'm more than willing to share. I've actually just condensed it from a bunch of different um, sources. Um, make sure that you schedule extra time for the very first lesson, especially just because it gets, it takes a little getting used to using a new format, especially if they're younger children and not used to using. I mean, it's becoming a little bit, um, the students don't have as much issue anymore just because, you know, mom's taking videos and, and all that. Um, I, even my students, I'm often receiving little videos of them playing because they wanted me to hear their song or whatever before the lesson. So their, their kids are definitely used to it, but sometimes they get shy. So, um, be also be really patient. Um, a lot of people are online right now. <laughs> I think we're all of us just sitting online. <laughs> so everything's moving a little bit slower. I've noticed my internet, um, service is definitely a little bit slower. So be patient and be ready to laugh and just bring a lot of joy. It's, it's really tricky maneuvering in this virtual world. So take time. So a couple things just specific for piano and for voice. For piano, make sure that your children, your students, your children, <laughs> maybe they are your children, I don't know. Uh, for your students, make sure that everything is preset. So if you have certain diagrams or anything that you want to help them to, you know, like especially if you're teaching scales or um, I'm not really teaching theory per se right now. I'm actually kind of um, trying to figure that out and I'm actually planning on creating a second video on how to teach theory um, because I actually haven't taught theory before. So I'm trying to kind of condense and try to figure out what I'm going to be doing. But um, yeah, so any kind of material that needs that needs to be um, used in a lesson, make sure that's preset before the lesson. Um, I like to give at least 24 hours um, just because parents are busy and they sometimes forget. But make sure that everything is printed off. It's nothing worse than trying to look on the phone or the tablet while they try to talk to you and then they can't see you and it's just disorganized. So make sure all material is preset before the lessons at least at least a couple hours ahead of time. 24 hours is generally the best. Um, make sure that all that they, they, when they turn on that camera, that their piano books are all sitting on the piano. I've had it, you know, Johnny forgot he can't find his, you know, study book and mom is yelling to dad, where is it? Or to his sister. This is just going to waste time. Time is valuable, especially right now. So even, well, it's always important, but it's even more so. So make sure everything is organized. Make sure mom and dad has, um, pen and paper there. So the kids can take notes. I do take notes and I do email those notes to the parents as well. But um, it's good practice for them to be writing it out. Um, and of course, with younger students, it's mom and dad's responsibility and they need to understand this. Um, make sure the parent knows to make sure the child goes to the bathroom and make sure they're not hungry or thirsty. Nothing worse than all of a sudden it's like, I got to I got to go to the bathroom. Right. And 10 minutes later, they show up again. This is disrespectful to you as the educator, so make sure the parents understand this. I don't know how many times where they're like, I'm thirsty, and the time they come back and you're sitting there. For voice, it's a little bit different, so make sure that you can see their full, full body, as I mentioned before. If they have access to a mirror, that would be wonderful, so then they can compare. I mean, they do see in the camera, but it's a little different, um, I find, because they kind of get distracted by looking at you, and normally theirs is, you know, a lot smaller. So if they have a mirror, then they can really see what's happening in their body. Again, pen and paper, younger parents, uh, younger students, parents need to be doing it. Um, make sure, again, bathroom, all that kind of stuff. Now, this is where it does a little bit different. If you, for voice, you need two devices. So this is very important. So they need one that they can be, um, you know, talking to you. And the other one is to be playing the backing tracks and vocal exercise. Because if you try to play and have them sing, there's a delay and it just, it won't happen. Um, if the parents have a Bluetooth, it's a speaker, it's even better because then you can actually hear the sound, the backing track properly. Um, again, you want to email all those links. Um, there's vocal exercises and I'm actually, I'm going to be creating, um, um, a link sort of, uh, playlist in, on YouTube. So as soon as that's available, I'll be announcing it, um, because I'm going to be sending it all to all of my students as well. So make sure that you, uh, pre-send that link. You, you're more than welcome to use mine or you can use it to create your own up to you. 
Um, make sure that lyrics sheets are sent. Um, I advise to print them off or sheet music is pre-sent um, because if they're looking at one tablet and trying to look at you, printing off, unfortunately, it seems to be the work the best. Um, I also, if new songs are going to be covered, I try to, cr I try to decide that before the lesson because kids never quite know what they want. But if they have like a couple days to decide if they want to, if, if you allow them to pick, if not, again, send, pre-send everything. As for backing tracks, you can create your own, um, and record it, um, yourself and email it to it. Um, there's a lot of really good ones on YouTube. Um, to be completely honest, I am sharing ones that I have purchased myself just because this is a crisis mode right now and um, I normally don't do that. I make the students purchase them, but in this time of um, uncertainty, I'm trying to make it as easy and smooth as possible for our students. So um, I think that's pretty much it. It's going to take time for you to get used to talking into a phone or tablet or whatever device you're using. Um, maybe play around with it. Um, if you haven't done it before, I know some of the older teachers that have called me and messaged me, you guys don't, you know, you're not, this is a new, new way of communicating for some of us like myself. It's, I, I'm daily always, you know, talking into Facebook live or Instagram live. So I'm used to it. So be patient with yourself. Um, it took me time to learn all this as well. It's not like I just an old pro. I do want to give some credit to where I got my sources. So, um, my, uh, one of my mentors, Edry Meals Weekly, um, has shared a lot of this information with me. Uh, voicelessons.com is a wonderful resource. Um, if you want to check it out, I learned a lot about that. And, uh, Beethoven at Home, which is, um, online service for teachers, um, which provides lessons, uh, provides students for teachers that teach, uh, um, at home. I've also sent and I've actually updated some of my stuff because their stuff was so good. Um, and then a lot of rest is just my personal experience. So I hope that helps. Again, I am here for anyone who has any questions or you just you're feeling really frustrated, stuck at home. I know for a lot of us, we are home most of the time anyways. So right now it feels weird because we, we could we're, we're almost, you know, we're home even more. So um, let's um, let's bring some joy into people's lives. I think it's our responsibility and, um, yeah, I'm here for you. So I hope that helps, um, blessings and prayers or whatever your belief system is. We're going to get through this. Thank you. Bye-bye.